Front page, the Wall Street Journal. Blast at Gaza Hospital kills hundreds, hundreds. Oh, geez, what really happened? Uh Uh-oh. The Wall Street Journal posted this one at 6.58 p.m. tonight. U.S. experts say evidence suggests Palestinian rocket hit Gaza Hospital. Suggests. Oh. Suggests. Hit the hospital. Hit the hospital. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how about this article from Tim Cash, which is published well before the Wall Street Journal, who apparently just does not want to admit they were wrong on the front page, because here's the damage. It appears to be the parking lot. Oliver Alexander said IDF drone footage from the hospital. From after the attack shows damage that is more consistent with a failed rocket than a J-dam. Majority of the damage is concentrated on the car park with no visible crater. We also have uh, this photo right here. Daylight. I mean, it's it's bad. Okay. You know, I, I, I'm, I, people got injured in this. These cars were on fire. No crater. The hospital was not leveled. It appears no. Hundreds of civilians did not die. They lied. <clears throat> they is- lied. This is going to be the first in a long, oh, yeah. long line of these conflicts. It's it's going to be opportunistic on both sides. Everybody is going to be foaming at the mouth, chomping right. at the bit to take advantage of any and every little thing that they can. <clears throat> what just, they what we had we had a super chat last night, and someone said a Hamas rocket could not level a, a building. It had to have been from Israel. And I I, I immediately said, was the hospital leveled? I don't. Is that is that what happened? Right. Like the whole hospital just collapsed? Leveled? Leveled? See, we go from struck to leveled. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the what they were what they were claiming was that the whole hospital was hit and collapsed, killing hundreds of people. Well, that, that was be, the argument they that made. That would be awful, and thankfully that didn't happen. And we should, we should how? <laughs> and so, I mean, this is this is our fault too. I mean, we're debating whether or not it, whether or not it was Israel or Palestine, and we never stopped to ask whether it really happened or not. Mm-hmm. It's really difficult to figure it out. Just like we were looking at that image of Rashida Tlaib earlier wearing the QAnon shaman hat trying to figure out is it a deep fake or not and and it's fake but things things make it out of the internet really quickly and everybody has an agenda that they're trying to push I mean the, agen- and the internet's the biggest game of the, telephone of all time the agenda yeah. I want to push is that the United States should stay out of it financially yeah I do too yeah I, I at this point especially but the but now Biden wants to give him a hundred million dollars so just justifying the terror sure. attack the Biden but, administration is trying to make both sides happy and they will proceed to let everyone down because they also issue they're like we are issuing sanctions against several members and entities affiliated I, with Hamas so I, they are trying to cover all their bases this is not going to work the only option really would be to not get involved. But of course, they're just making us more involved in ways that are so complicated and are obviously going to backfire. Biden's going to strengthen his base by pumping money into any cause he can related to helping Palestine and and leftist activists. Meanwhile, conservatives in the United States are going to scream for Israel and to dump more of United States dollars into Israel. We already give them billions of dollars. We should just stop giving everyone money. We just <laughs> thoughts and prayers. Like yeah, but you like know Cortez, why we do it, right? Like we're not the world's ATM. We the reason we give them money is so they spend it. That's it. Yeah. We want you. You give a hundred million dollars to a handful of world leaders. They will live like kings and spend that. Meaning we will do the labor on their behalf. Because what do you get? What What do you buy with U.S. dollars? Things from people who take U.S. dollars for the most part as American citizens. But then it circulates in their countries. Or that that wealth that we produce is shifted off to their country. These world leaders then agree to use the petrodollar, and this is the game that's yep. being played. Yep. Yep. If not we, everywhere, though. Some not people, everywhere. Yep. Some people are saying they've had enough, and I don't know whether that's going to play out. Yep. I don't yeah. know if that's going to be good or bad for us, but it is happening. Isn't Isn't it kind of funny that uh, around the same time the BRICS nations are announcing their own currency, and several nations are announcing they're going to stop trading in U.S. dollars, or they're going to start trading in yuan? World War Three seems to be breaking out. Yep. How convenient. How we've convenient. got we've got 19,000 personnel in the Mediterranean just outside of, of Israel. We've got 2,000 uh, uh, more ready to be deployed. Yep. They're saying the Pentagon is pre- preparing them to go on the ground, potentially. Yeah, I, I, I look, the embassy in the United, the U.S. embassy in Lebanon is set on fire last night. Yep. Yeah, so sad. Mm-hmm. They need it. They need to cast his belly. So, like, okay, so you're saying that, like, uh, supporting Hamas will strengthen his base. What is the size of, uh, assuming he got 81 million votes, right? What's the size of his base, and do we really, is, is it really believable? Like, is that mostly people supporting no, I, Palestine? He's, he's, uh, Biden's going to lose yeah. from yeah. this. Mm-hmm. I mean, That's I don't like, think it's a good play. Like, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, I, I have a lot of friends who are, they're, they're political, they're, they're, they're Democrats, whatever, fine, well, but they're not. They're not here supporting well, Hamas I don't right think, now. Well, hold on, uh, look hold on. At, look at not this. everyone who's pro-Palestine yeah. is pro-Hamas. Yeah. It's, they're two different things. Yeah. They're related. But I think that 
you know, I would hope that a lot of people who are wanting U.S. aid to go and support Palestinians who are suffering, they don't want to support terrorists. No. Even if I disagree with them, I don't I don't think that they necessarily want to see terrorism supported. But look, the reality is that part of Biden's base are the same class of people who donate to institutions like Harvard. And we are seeing no. that those donors are pulling yes. their dollars. I, I, so I, 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 he's I, hurting either way. There's no no positive move. Well, it's for him. not a good move. I understand the argument that Palestine is not Hamas. But I do kind of think that's a bit naive because if you're if, if Joe Biden says I'm going to give one hundred million dollars to the people of Palestine, we know where that money's really going. It's going to get confiscated by Hamas, it, it, confiscated or just given to them. They're the government in Gaza. They will just take it. And it's also basically saying if you engage in terror, even if the money was, was specifically given to NGOs and it resulted in people getting cleaner water and buildings and air conditioning and, and, and other things they, they need, then Hamas is basically told, like, well, whenever you need money. Whenever you want money for your people, whether it goes to you or not, all you got to do is go kill it's thousands a, of Israelis. It's a terrible precedent. Absolutely. And, and so when it comes to these people who are like, we, we, are, we are defending Palestine, it's okay, well, the Palestinian people vote for, vote for Hamas. Not, not all of them, though. No, but, but, but the point is they're, they're, that you, you can argue for civilians. That I totally get. Mm -hmm. But the government stands in the way. And what is the solution then? The solution is the United States has got to stay out of it. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, But people who say, I'm, I, that want to support Palestine, no, you, 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 there, there's no way to support one. Get and, creative. And not the other. Get creative. I haven't figured out if, how to do that. No, no. You, we can we can stop supporting uh, all of it altogether, mm -hmm. or you can support all of it. Like the the idea that you can support the Palestinian people and not be supporting Hamas is incorrect. I know. I'm, I'm not saying you are directly funding and allowing sure. Hamas to engage in what they're doing, but what you give when you donate to these groups will find its way to empowering Hamas. Former Congressman Justin Amash, uh, his family was Palestinian, Palestinian Christians, and they were sponsored over here by Christian missionaries. So I don't know how easy or challenging that is currently, but that's one way to try to help people is get them out of that situation. Sure. That's what people, the, people, very people who are that's, trying to leave, that, be, I, that I can That's totally what the with. First Minister of Scotland is saying today. Yeah, he but, said Scotland will take refugees from Be careful from Gaza. who you invite into your country and that's, home. That, that's it. Be I mean, careful. When you've got, I think the latest numbers that we pulled up a couple days ago was like uh, Hamas won the election with like 44% or something. I don't, I'm, I'm not an expert in the region. But 44% is, I mean, that's that's like the margins we get for presidents in this country. I don't, I'm not going to blame everybody for right. Joe Biden. The people who voted for Joe Biden are, are to blame. But you you you, you have, it's, it's inseparable, right? There There is going to be in any material support to Gaza, material support going towards Hamas. Sure. It's just like Live Aid when, when they... When politicians and celebrities and musicians, everybody got together to to pump money into Africa, it went to African warlords. It didn't go to the people who needed it. This it's is true for, for anywhere we give money. This includes Israel. Yeah, absolutely. When we when we when we give money and donate to Israel, you are strengthening the economy and the structure and the infrastructure of Israel, which ultimately can run up to the IDF, to the Israeli government. I am not saying that is right or wrong for either. I'm saying they're inseparable. Mm -hmm. So that there's a, I, I'm frustrated by the people who are like. We don't we don't like what Hamas is doing. We support the Palestinian people. And it's like, well, the plurality of the voters support Hamas and Hamas just massacred a bunch of civilians. And now our government's giving them more money. I got a simple solution. Cut it off. I think like, the, no, no more. No more funding. The best thing that we could do is try to try to facilitate peace talks. It's not gone well in the past. That's that's about it. That's the I, and, and, that, and that's and that's the thing. It's like, I, look, man, there's, there's no easy answer here. Yeah, I see what, what I see here with this conflict is really exemplified by what we see with the left, where these leftists are cheering for death. A lot of them are. Yeah. I mean, when, when they post a picture of a paraglider, that's gross. Mm -hmm. They're it's celebrating gross. death. Absolutely. No question. And maybe there's the banality of evil in the morons on the left who have no idea what actually happened and are just waving the flags and raising the fist. But when these groups organize an outright issue statement saying they're freedom fighters, when the professor said the professor said settlers are not civilians, they will lie to your face as they've done. They will cheer for death. And then we are supposed to sit back and be like, let's be reasonable here, guys. Let's make sure we're helping the civilians like, no, 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 dude, dude, well, they're lying to you. And they're committing the, the people. Hamas is killing people. I'm not saying Israel is innocent. I'm not saying any country in war. There, there's, there's, there's always some, some nuance of the conflict. There's always collateral damage. It's, it's never good. But I'm just sick of being lied to. And when you look at what the left says and does, they cheer for your death and they lie about being victims. So it's just like, stop, just stop. The Israeli government does not treat people well over there but there's no that doesn't justify murdering people with paragliders and it's really unfortunate that people on both sides no one will just admit murder is wrong so I mean, so uh, 
when you, when we have this video that comes out, um, and we had we had Max Blumenthal, and he's talking about the march of return. Okay. Palestinians peacefully marched to the fence with their hands up, and Israel still shot at them. Okay. That that's the kind of story where you're like, oh wow, I mean, like that that sounds really bad. Why would they do that? Well, here's the question I have. I, I'll ask you, as I'd ask anybody, if Israel removed all of the security perimeter around Gaza and told the people of Gaza they're free to move through Israel, what would happen? Oh wow. I mean, you'd see a lot of different mixed reactions there. But I think you'd see wait, violence. Wait, wait, that, yeah, you'd see. be a massacre. By who? I mean, both sides, I assume. I doubt the, the old ladies in the kibbutzes are going to pick up guns and go no, charge. No, not old ladies. No, what likely would happen is there's going to be a bunch of fighting age young men, mainly Hamas, substantially more than we saw actually paraglide, because paragliding is difficult and more expensive. Sure. And they would rampage through the kibbutzes, the villages, make their way to Tel Aviv and start just massacring people with rifles. I think you'd probably see some Israelis who were angry doing similar things. Yes, but the Israelis aren't going to storm into Gaza. If the if the security barrier of Gaza was removed, Israeli citizens are not going to run full speed into Gaza to start massacring people. Yeah, it's defensive versus offensive. I think we're missing that. I mean, so there was this Irish politician who I saw a clip of talking about how I think his name's Paul Murphy talking about how people should he he's pro Palestine or mm -hmm. I mean you could I don't know if you would argue that he's pro Hamas, but he's saying that this is not a conflict between equals because uh, Israel is significantly more financially sure. and militarily advantaged. But I don't think. That that may be true. On the other hand, the solution being like we should have peace talks is almost to me ineffe ineffective because there's no peace between these two people. I don't they think it would. Yeah. There never will be. They have been in conflict for a long time, and Israel has been, you know, has taken aggressive moves in in their own step, and Palestine and Hamas have responded in turn. I mean, what would peace possibly look like between these? Two I don't think they're ever going to get that Hamas yes. rejects. I yeah. think the best you can Hamas do is never back down. I mean, I, I don't think that there's any. It, from what I know, and I've been trying to research this more, for, for Palestinians, there is no compromise because they always feel like they are getting the short on the sick. The best you could do is try to negotiate a two-state solution. I don't think that there will ever be peace in the Middle East, but I think that it's possible we could de-escalate this and there would be less death. There will never be a two-state solution when one side says no and from the river to the sea. Well, both sides are saying no right now. Yeah, but one side says from the river to the sea. Like, the left... That stormed that capital. They're they're chanting for the eradication of Israel. Patrice Cullors of BLM 2015 said, end <coughs> Israel outright. So if we're going to Israel and saying, like, what can we do to stabilize the region with a two-state solution? Israel has an open door for negotiation. I'm not saying they're innocent. Didn't a lot of people in Hamas, didn't they, didn't they write in their charter that they wanted to go back to like a 1967 agreement and have a two-state solution? So, so the issue... I don't I, want to be I, arguing for Hamas. It feels great. Yeah, no, I mean, Hamas's original charter said the eradication of Israel, and, and mm -hmm. I, I think it might have specifically referred to the Jews themselves, right? right? Yeah. And then it was amended, I think, in 2017 to tone that language down, probably Good. because they knew they relied on international support. Sure. But those people's sentiments don't change. The, 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 the issue is, I don't care who you support, the issue is there are two ideologically opposed groups. Yeah. There's one chanting from the river to the sea. Okay, like the other if, one's if, just saying just saying it quietly, maybe? Israel, I, I I I don't know if there is a slogan of Israel to chant other than we've seen some people say they want to glass Gaza or something like that's, that. That's quite intense. I don't know if the government is outright coming out and saying those things. It seems to be the the, the Israeli government understands the nuances of international relations and is trying, at the very least we can say this, whether they are or not, they're putting on the front of we try to minimize civilian casualties and we are only responding. We are not instigating. So when you have war between two factions and one side wins, there is no solution where you're just like, well, no, I, I understand these are warring factions with deep ideological tensions going back thousands of years. But let's just let's just have peace. It's like, well, okay, certainly not. That's very naive. It's, it's, it's never going to happen. That's very naive. I, I just I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, Hamas just lied about everything. I mean, they. They paraglided into uh, into Israel and they started killing civilians, yes. killing children. And that is their 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 their, their uh, military doctrine. Kill civilians and capture civilians. Is it's part terrible. Of, be, uh, so uh, how do we have peace with that? We don't have peace with Hamas, but we. But I Hamas think, is so interesting. Okay. The rest of the rest of the people in Palestine, then, I feel, would really love to have peace talks be a thing. I, I think I think that's not true. I think that's then, then the, the answer would be for Israel to invade Gaza and excise Hamas and then restore democratic institutions to the reigning individuals. Guess what? They will not accept that. The other Arabic nations have outright 
threatened that if Israel does that, it's going to escalate. Mm. So that's not going to happen. And then Israel's mm. other answer is airstrikes on Hamas targets, which results in massive collateral damage. So we're stuck with an open air. Stop funding any of it. I say in the, the U.S. should in not be end, involved in an I unsolvable problem. The the one who and then another group that loses is the American people as more of our tax money is funded into. I think we should absolutely. I think one of the mm. ways that you might see a better outcome in this is if we stopped giving Israel United States money. Mm. Here's the, the argument Ben Shapiro made, which is not without its merit, I don't completely agree, is that Israel will not allow itself to cease to exist. It will not allow defeat. That's and, it ha and it is considered, what, the fourth strongest military. It is also widely speculated they have nuclear weapons. Yeah. The Samson option is if Israel is facing extermination, they will use nukes to defend themselves. Okay. If the U.S. does not make every attempt to stabilize the conflict, it will devolve into World War III. That's basically what Ben Shapiro's argument was. If Israel invades Gaza now, and then Iran responds, Syria and Lebanon respond, and then Israel gets overwhelmed from external forces without U.S. support, Israel fires a nuke on Iran, Iran retaliates, the region lights up, pulling in a bunch of different nations, leading to a wide scale, if, if at the very least, a regional annihilation, worst case, World War III. So it's up to Team America World Police to step in. That's the argument from Ben. Tell everyone, yeah. My, my disagree. argument is the U.S. intervention itself yes. exacerbates that problem yes. in the exact same way. Absolutely. And there is no solution other than we're walking full speed as fast as we can into World War III. I don't think there's going to be ever like a, a literal peace in the Middle East. I think we could see maybe less conflict, and I would love for them to give that a try. And there, I, I there, do there think is removing our money is the first step in that. There is one path towards peace. Well, it's actually two. The, 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 the path towards peace that we hope for is generational uh, um, uh, proximity leading to a generational de-escalation. Yep. As more and more of these people grow up in these areas and want nothing to do with the conflict, they just to live better lives, and the old ideas and traditions fade away, they'll start to say, like, why, why, why were my great-grandparents fighting you? Like, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with them, man. Just leave, leave yep. me alone. So one of the things that helps uh, uh, helped racism kind of dissipate in the United States was proximity. People growing up next to people of other races being like, we are friends. Like everything they said about that guy was not true. And so it removes those stigmas and stereotypes. We could also remove sanctions on Iran and kind of just leave the rest of the Middle East alone and stop engaging in regime change every now and then. That would probably help I don't think well. that's going to, I, I, I'll, that, that won't stabilize the region. Uh, I think, I think it would stop destabilizing it so much. I, I, I think before the United States was in Afghanistan, you had the Soviets there in the, and, and, and then we, we backed the Mujahideen because it's a proxy war. So whether it's us, China or Russia, there is going to be foreign influence m manipulating and, 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 and fighting over the Middle East. I'm not saying I have a good solution. I'm just saying that it seems that we are facing with, with thousands of years of ideological uh, hatred. There, the two solutions would be can we just do everything in our power to try and stabilize this so that over a long period of time, the fighting calms down? Maybe not, especially when you see the, the, the children in Gaza are being taught explicitly to yep, hate. They hate us. Hate, hate us and Israel. The other solution is the one that nobody likes to admit, but is uh, in, in all sci-fi, the trope of what the AI does to bring about peace. Wipe out humans. Well, I mean, that seems a little, maybe a bit much. That's the extreme instant. Yeah. I, yeah. There's peace when there's well, no one left. Yeah. I think I think we could not do that. I, I think, you know, that our the goal is to avoid that from happening. And that is the 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 terrifying outcome of if we can't solve the problem. In our the involvement way. in the in the Middle East has just been an absolute failure yeah. since the Iraq war, since Desert Storm, really. Well, before that, I mean, since since the Mujahideen. Well, I mean, going, I mean look, mm -hmm. Iran. Sure. Yeah. The, the Iranian revolution. The yeah, absolutely. And even the idea of proximity doesn't necessarily bear itself out to work because we may have had that at a certain period of time, but then the kids go to college and they learn all the things that they learn now, which teach you to hate your neighbor rather than to actually learn yep. to understand them. So I don't know as long as information is freely passed from generation to generation, if that is something that's going to happen, it's going to take an excessively long period of time. And as long as military action is still happening in the interim, you create new enemies with every new military well, woke action. Well, students here hate yeah. the Second Amendment and yeah. guns. So, you know, that's like, not that's not. <laughs> well, I don't know about woke. The far left likes guns. Yeah.
It's the liberals who don't. The liberals don't. Uh, yeah, the left loves leftist guns. Leftist college students here, I would say, they don't like guns. It is also funny that you mentioned I don't know Tima. about that. You think they like guns? Yeah, leftists like guns. They have they have like the Red Guard. Depends. They have the social, they have the John Brown Gun Club. But I think leftist college students are unique partially because of the impact that the Parkland school shooting had. Yeah. That was like one of the big high school to college yeah, no, anti-gun I don't, I don't think push. So. See, I think that's more li- I, like, I, I don't think so. I, I, Average, like, Va- students, Vosh, Vosh is pro gun. All yeah, of the high schoolers that I worked small. with who are now in college. He's a, are a prominent leftist with hundreds of thousands of followers, and he's 26. He's a he's a small demogra- he represents a small demographic of gun loving leftists. I I think you're wrong. I, the, the left, the leftists love guns. It's the liberal. It's, 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 uh, yeah. it's the average liberal that hates the guns. Yeah. Now there, yeah. there's there far less. Uh, there's far less of your gun owning blue dog Democrats than there was before. Yes, and the rest have been turned by the media, by Hollywood, by all these places to be extremely anti gun because they read articles every day that says there's been 90 yeah. school shootings yeah. today, mm-hmm. um, and all these things. It is funny that you mentioned Team America: World Police because that movie, you know, I, I mean, actually, when you think about the people that made it back, it might have been more libertarian, but it would have been Hollywood back in the day that yeah. would have been true, very, very like uh, America needs to stop intervening well, in these foreign idea. conflicts. Maybe we'll get another one, yeah. you know, except this time it seems more like instead of just stay out, it's just give everybody money. Yeah. You know, so. Which is never going to work. That's the most ridiculous solution of all Team time. Team America World Bank. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.